today. Today we're doing a bit of work on a 2005 VZ Commodore. It's got the 5L40E transmission, the 5 speed. And you can see there's quite a bit of oil at the back there, so it looks like the extension housing seal is leaking. It's probably what's giving him his trouble. He couldn't quite explain what it's doing, but um, probably a low, low oil problem. Blown out and wire brushed around the pan rail. And I'm just going to loosen this filler plug here. So what I actually do, just move that cable out of the way there. And just give it a bit of a tap with the hammer because uh, they're alloy the thread will lock lock on itself in there sometimes so sometimes by just giving it a tap will just help loosen it and another thing it'll do uh, these are a T45 so it'll actually um, if someone's used the wrong one, people usually use a smaller one in there and then strip the thread or the, the little splines in there. There we go. We can take that plug out now too. There's a T45 here, you do the same with that one to drain the oil out, just give it a bit of a tap. Not too hard because you'll bend the, the pan. And there we go. And I'll just drain that oil out now. There's a little o-ring there on that plug you can see where that groove is there um, that's where an o-ring sits this one's actually still stuck on the pan there so it's a good idea to replace those um, and then you don't have to over tighten that plug to stop it from leaking and there, there's the o-ring there it's just stuck on the pan Now this filter, you can just wiggle it out, but don't just let it drop down because then you can see all that oil coming out of it. Now if you don't do periodic servicing on these, um, the magnet there, you can see how much fine metal has accumulated on there. 
um, that fine metal will become attracted to your solenoids that control everything in the transmission and if it goes into the coil it can reduce the magnetic field in the, in the solenoid um, inhibit the operation or, or, or it won't operate as properly or as quickly as it should and also that stuff is suspended in the oil and it becomes like a uh, like a liquid sandpaper if you can understand that so a regular service change your filter clean that magnet so that magnet can operate and I always like to leave these magnets up on the ridge so you get more surface area of it working you can also see that that magnet stopped working because it's become covered in all that uh, fine metallic debris and then yeah, the rest of the transmission will be covered in this fine metal there. There's a little sensor. Now it's just a good idea to blow that out, give it a clean. And we'll just do this one at the rear as well. Okay, we're just going to put a new filter on there and then we can clean the pan and put that pan back on and then we'll remove that tail shaft. Now you've got to take these two, there are two little seals there on the filter. Um, so you can see them in there. You just take them out carefully, um, trying not to damage that housing. If you damage the housing, the seal won't seal properly and you can end up sucking air um, above the filter there so it'll feel like it's slipping all the time or a low oil problem but it's actually sucking air up there now I've actually got this little tool and I just slowly pry it out be two of them. There's one seal. And there's the other. And that they'll be on the filter, on the new filter. There's the old one. There's a little stop there, that little stop. And there'll be two two seals on it like that
And these, these are actually loose on there, so it's a good idea to replace that because if it doesn't seal properly there, it, it'll possibly suck air. Now here I've got uh, two filters that look the same. Um, one of them's actually out of a BMW. This one here is out of the 5L40Es in a BMW. And the difference being is that you can see that the pickup has like a little snorkel on it there. And they have this little spacer there. Um, it's always a good idea on the BMW ones. They have quite a bit of loose plastic on there. I just like to break that off or or maybe get a scraper and just scrape that off just so it doesn't dislodge over time and uh, block up the filter. And you can see that one has that pickup there. Um, on the Holdens, the GM ones, the pickup's actually here. And I'll show you that. That's it there. That's a BMW one and that's a GM one. Hasn't got the little, little snorkel on it. So you can see that side by side. But everything else is pretty much identical on it. Um, the top, top part of it has these little spaces there. Everything's the same. Um, the length of the where the seals are, that's all the same. And just double check that nothing's in there when you're putting the filter on. Make sure you got the right one, the holding one. And it's just a matter of pushing that in. We've removed these two old seals and you can, if you actually try and take those out off, you'll see that they're really snug and tight. And it's just a matter of just slowly working it in there, pushing it up. And that just sits like that. Have a look. Um, they have two types of, well, they might even have a cork one available now, but um, you have these metal clad pan gaskets and you can see that it's joined to the aluminium and then you have the just the normal rubber pan seal both do the same job um, so you can decide which one you prefer or what it, whichever one you get in the kit and I've straightened out the little dings in the, the pan there's one over here and all this was pushed up and instead of putting the magnet back in there I'm actually going to leave it right here up like it is now you can see that there's a, going to be a lot more surface area uh, working <coughs> to pick up all that fine metal in there so if I leave it on there like that it won't do any harm there's actually plenty of room here at the back of the transmission as well and if it does vibrate off or come off there it's just going to drop down like that anyway so you can see you have to actually push it pretty hard for it to drop down but what I'm um, aiming for is to get as much surface area working on that magnet to collect all that rubbish there and that magnet will probably sit in this area here um, you can see there's a hole there and there where the solenoids are so we'll just make sure it sits properly before we put it on too. And then you can see it. there's that hole there that I was pointing at and the other one where the solenoids sit along here. So I don't think it'll be in the way. I might even put it towards the front of the transmission a little bit. But before I bolt it up I'll definitely try it make sure it's not hitting anything. Always a good idea to put all the 
bolts in first, just loose, before you start tightening them up. That way you know that the gasket hasn't been misaligned or something like that. And I'm using the aluminium clad ones. Okay, I've got all the bolts on. You can see that the pan's nice and loose. And now I'm just going to cross over and uh, tighten it up slowly. Now, as per usual, I've marked where the original um, tail shafts sat. I'm going to take these bolts off. Hopefully that'll be able to just slide out. Um, the, on that um, yoke, there's actually a nut there, so you need to take the nut off to get the yoke out. So we're going to take the tail shaft off, centre bearing, and I've also marked the rear end as well, just so I can put it back exactly as it was, and there's no issue of vibration or um, a different feel of the vehicle. So I'm going to drop this down, pull it out, and then we'll take that nut off that yoke, slide it out and take the seal out. Done the tail shaft, you can see it's come away from the that rubber and I've taken off the bolts on the center bearing. It's not going to come down on you because the exhaust is holding it there. But you can see the whole thing moves backwards and forwards now. And now I can take the the front off take these ones off uh, I think they're 14 mil and then that whole thing can slide out and then I'll, that'll give me access to that yoke now I've left the rubbers on I've left the, the rear rubber on the diff part on the diff flange taken off the center bearing bolts I've actually uh, lowered that, um, I've taken the outside bolts off the cross member just so it drops down a little bit, just to make it easier to work on. And you can see I've left the bolts on the, on the rubbers, and that should just slide, there you go, slides right out. You can leave it on there, you don't have to take the whole thing off. Some people take the exhaust off and do all sorts of things and just a waste of time. Anyway, now you can see that that nut there. Um, we've got to undo that nut and slide that out. Um, I'm also just going to mark it. Um, it shouldn't matter, but I will mark it anyway. And then we can replace that seal in there. Um, before I take it off, I'm just going to thoroughly blow it out and uh, maybe even if I can get a wire brush in there uh, it's a good idea to clean it as best you can so you don't get any muck going back in there when you put the new seal in. Now I just used a 30mm socket um, with a rattle gun, but you can also um, put it in park and maybe wedge a screwdriver in there just so it doesn't turn or supports it as you loosen it. So I've taken that off. And that should just slide out. You might have to, might have to tap it out with a screwdriver. Oh, with a hammer. Sorry. I'll just tap that out. And there we go. I've just marked it just in case on the splines there, and I've tapped it out. I've just loosened it, and it just comes out like that. And there you go. There's a seal. Make sure it's nice and clean before you take it out. And we just pry that out uh, with a bent screwdriver or you can get a slide hammer in there and just pull it out. Just be very careful you don't damage the housing, that's all. Um, otherwise that seal won't be able to take up whatever you've damaged there. Another thing to do is just check that flange, just make sure it's not hasn't worn a groove in there. If it has, um, you can either push the seal in a little bit deeper if you're able to or not in as deep um, and that'll just sit on a new spot next to the, the groove. Um, the, the little lip on the seal sometimes will wear a, 
a groove in there but this one looks okay so we'll just put that one back as it was Just putting the slide hammer in. And there she blows. And one seal. Now I've got the flange there and you can actually see that it has worn a slightly a slight groove there so I'm going to polish it out in the lathe and um, when I knock that seal in I'm not going to sit um, knock it in as deep so it's going to sit out this side this side of that groove Okay, I've polished that up. You can see it's nice and smooth. And one other thing, one other place where it can leak is on the splines there. You can see there's an O-ring in there. So sometimes those O-rings flatten out. So it's always a good idea to replace that as well. Um, often overlooked, but um, well worth replacing. And that section for that o-ring uh, is 135 thou um, the other the old one was about 110 thou so i'm going to put this one in and just make sure you put a lot of uh, oil or some uh, vaseline petroleum jelly just so it goes in um, a little bit easier so the splines don't cut that seal they so output shafts, um, they actually have bearings in there instead of bushes and you can actually see there is a little bit of slop in there so those bearings are probably worn out so this might be a temporary fix um, it has done oh, 240,000 so it's probably on its way out anyway now, I'm going to put the seal in and I've got this little, it's an old piston that I've machined a little step out of and that seal just sits in there and when I knock it in it won't, won't push it in as deeply as it was so it'll actually sit on a, a new spot on that flange. I've got the seal there, make sure it's facing the right way. And just tap it in. And you can hear when it's gone all the way in, it makes a different sound. And you can see that it's probably up to the chamfer on that um, seal. It hasn't been pushed in flush like it was before. Now I'm just going to put the flange back in. Make sure you've got the O-ring in there. Make sure I'll just put a bit of oil on there. Put a bit of oil there where that O-ring runs. And on the O-ring. It doesn't matter where you put it, but I'm going to put it back in the same spot. 
And I might even just slowly tap it in. And that's just popped up onto that step with the O-ring. Little washer goes in there. Nut. And we're just going to do it up and put everything back. It's in reverse order. I'm not going to film the whole process. Okay, we've put the tail shaft back on. Just double and triple check everything. Make sure you've put all the bolts back where they go. Tighten the pan etc and now we're going to fill it the way we're going to fill it is take this plug out and the temperature of the transmission needs to be between 30 and 50 degrees if you go over 50 degrees you've got to let it cool down and then test retest it again because the oil um, will expand with heat um, it's important to have it between those two temperatures otherwise when you check it um, the, the expanded oil will come out and give you a false reading. So we're just going to fill it up until it starts coming out of here and I'm going to just start it just for a moment just so it primes the, um, the transmission and then I'm going to top it up again and then we can leave the motor running and then check the oil level. And I've just used the Tritec ADF Synthetic, the Multitrans, and, and you can see that one does the GM Dextron 3 and Dextron 6. You can see it still hasn't reached the 30 to 50 degrees. We're on about 27 degrees there. So I'm just going to let it warm up to 30 degrees and then I'll put the plug in. But it's just starting to dribble now anyway, so that's pretty close to where it should be. Just make sure you've got the little O-ring on that plug as well. And I'm going to leave it at that. I've been up in the vehicle, changed through the gears. On about 28 degrees so it's pretty close take for a run now okay I've had it for a run we're on about 40 degrees it was and with the motor running I just checked it and the oil was dripping out of this little plug here and another thing I'm doing is just Checking to make sure that that seal's not leaking and it looks dry as a bone in there. You can see it under there. And also, it's a good idea to just blow out when um, that oil drips down, it'll run along that pan rail there, so it may trick you into thinking that it's leaking. So, it's a good idea to just wipe it or blow it all out. And again, just Double check that you've done everything up, especially the centre bearing bolts. Make sure there's nothing loose. Everything's back to where it was. And there we go. Now we do a service on a 4L, a 5L40E transmission, 5 spoke, and uh, replace the extension housing seal um, without the need to pull all this exhaust and everything off. Anyway, I hope that helps. Thank you for watching.